so great to have you. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm Carly Golightly, and um, I'm, re I'm a recovered registered dietitian who works in eating disorders. Awesome. Well, we're so excited to have you, and this is just going to be, this is part of our recovered clinician series, or just, you, you know, I'm not sure even what I called it, is recovered clinicians or just recovery stories, but basically the idea to just get a series of stories that can bring insight, inspiration, maybe a puzzle piece to that person's um, puzzle in their recovery. And so the, the main thing I want to chat about today is, and the question I'm asking everyone is, what is the one thing in your recovery? And I know there's, it's so complex and there's so many things that went into it, but what is the one thing that kind of stands out as that key to your recovery, that thing that maybe shifted your recovery journey or, you know, just that, that stands out a bit for you? Yeah. Um, I really feel like it was yoga for me because um, the exercise piece of my disorder was really strong. And I remember there was kind of this point um, where I told myself, okay, um, I'm going to get rid of my tracking devices and I'm going to discontinue my gym membership. And like, I'm just going to go cold turkey basically on all of this stuff that was holding up my disorder and um I I think I might have had some kind of like like plan to feel control in the back of my mind like I'll go for a walk or something and then that lasted for about a week and I was just going crazy mm -hmm. and I drove to the gym to try and get a day pass and I was sitting in the parking lot like having this internal battle with myself on whether or not I should go in and then I saw that there was a yoga studio next door to the gym and they had um, a free week trial posted in the window and so I went and um, it was definitely like something physical that I could do with my body and so it was really helpful in that way because it it felt like I was sort of like scratching the itch a little bit of the physicality but also um, I I didn't expect to like it as much as I did and then eventually love it and I definitely didn't expect to happen to have like a teacher who really cared about her students and who um, you know, I thought that, that yoga was like another kind of exercise. Mm -hmm. And I, so it was shocking <laughs> that it wasn't, that it wasn't, that it was like something more. Um, and I mean, I think it, it like really started me down this path of learning a lot more about myself and then a lot more, um, skills on like how to cope with being a human. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, I'm excited to ask you a little bit more, and I am writing some questions down here. If you see me trying things that I don't want to forget, um, so many questions popped up when when you brought this up. So um, I'd be interested, and maybe we can table this and come back to this in a little bit. But I'd be interested. This kind of, you know, you kind of put this question out here that how do you navigate exercise? So you said you have a history with compulsive over exercise. And um, that's something I think just aside from, you know, how yoga has helped you um, in your recovery journey. But as that aside of, you know, how did you navigate through finding a healthy relationship with exercise? I think that'd be a helpful thing and a question I get a bit. Um, so maybe we can put that, you know, into this. Um, but before we do, I would love to hear, and of course, if you're open to that, but um, I would love to hear a little bit more about, you know, what you took away from yoga. Why, you know, you say that yoga has had this healing effect. Um, how, you know, how would you describe that to people? What, what were you able to take away maybe immediately and then um, maybe subconsciously and how did that develop? Yeah, um, well, like I said, I think a big part of it was the teacher that I had. I don't, I think that was really like lucky um, because I, there's all different kinds of yoga and different kinds of teaching styles, right? And so I think um, one of the things that I taught from, or I learned from that teacher was that, um, I, I think honestly, up until that time in my life, I didn't, because of, um, my disorder, I, 
didn't realize that I was like a super feeler type of person that I experienced emotions really deeply. And um, so one of the things that yoga and that teacher in particular taught me were that, um, that like one, I could feel things and it wasn't just physical sensation, right? Like, like physically, you know, moving my body. It was like, oh, I have emotions that I can feel sometimes in my body too. And then also um, it kind of was like a container of, of a place that I could put it, right? Like it was when I was in the yoga studio, I could, um, I was, I had permission to feel those things and to um, start shifting into being an observer because I, and I don't think I'm the only one that in my disorder, it was like, oh, as soon as an emotion comes up, I have to stuff it down in some way or I have to get rid of it in some way. And so um, it was really helpful in helping me learn how to be an observer and kind of regulate my emotions in that way. Um, and also kind of come to peace with the fact that like, I'm a human being who feels emotions and I'm also a human who feels a lot of things, a lot of emotions. Um, and I think like also sort of branching off on that a little bit is, um, I, I want to say the word community and I don't necessarily mean that in terms of like specific people in involved in the yoga that I did who were like mentors to me, although there certainly were some, but also this, this idea that like you can walk into a studio for a class and in like you could say nothing to a single person and all of you are there healing together in ways that are not visible like and I think that was big for me too because I always felt like my eating disorder was invisible um, because I live in a really resilient body that like doesn't show the changes you know the things I was doing in my disorder um, and so that felt especially powerful to me that that I could be like seen in that way um, and that we were all part of this collective healing without even like having to share things with each other necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like yoga provided you this, this safe space to kind of explore these things that you might have not, you know, it sounds like you didn't even know there like these things to explore, but that space to, you know, come into that and um, heal. It's, it sounds like you learned a lot about your eating disorder too, and the purpose it serves through yoga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it was like as in my face as it is maybe now looking back, but definitely. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, just to see like, yeah, to look back and see what role it played. Um, I think that's how recovery goes is you don't know, you know, people think they're stagnant in the recovery, um, not knowing the things that are happening, even though this one thing that they're trying to focus on and change isn't changing all the other things that are happening um, until you, you know, take a step back and, and look at your journey and see how far you've come and the things that played a role. Um, so I think that's a you know good side note, but um, I'm curious. So with how did yoga, if it did, how did it affect um, your relationship with um, with your body? We'll we'll start with that. Um, I mean it, it's hard to maybe remember like the specifics, but I think if I look at it as sort of like the overarching theme from then to now. Um, it taught me how to, how to be in it, <laughs> right? Like, um, to just be with myself. And I, I think eventually there was maybe some like appreciation tied into there, but, but I think mostly, um, in the very beginning, it was the sense of sort of neutrality, um, cause it, was definitely a very negative space before then um yeah 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 it sounds like so it sounds like you're describing kind of it helped you to be in your body and in a different way and to tolerate it um which is really you know kind of you know maybe appreciation and compassion came later but it sounds like that started your body image healing um so what would you recommend for you know, others who might be interested, who are watching this, who are, are, you know, would like to 
are thinking I'd like to start yoga. Um, you know, what, what would you, any insight or recommendation or anything you would, you know, tell them, of course, not knowing anything about, you know, where they're at in their recovery journey, but. Yeah, I think if you, if you have the resources that it is really helpful to be particular about the teacher that yeah. you're getting your resource, that you're getting your yoga from. Um, and I, and I say that like, there are all kinds of resources all over the place, right? Like yoga is super popular, especially in the U.S. now. Um, and I think, I think this is an area where it, it's, um, it could be potentially harmful if you aren't seeking out the right person. And so I would say finding um, someone who doesn't have like basically diet culture talk, right? Like talking about bodies or talking about um, diety sort of things and maybe maybe also specifically seeking out you know if there are let's say um, things that you perceive as obstacles into pursuing yoga such as like your body size or your um, gender or you know different aspects of your identity that feel like they're missing from the sort of mainstream yoga practices then um, just know that like there are people out there doing that work and that that I think it would be really helpful to maybe see your identities reflected in that way too. Yeah. Yes. And and just, you know, kind of navigating it when you are going into it, just being intentional and careful and in and, and, you know, ease into it. Um and also like you said, kind of know, but you know, trusting your you know, how you feel in that situation, whether it's the teacher or the class or, you know, what messages are being taught or how it's just how you're feeling in your body, um, just as you're approaching it, you know, kind of carefully. Um, and that kind of, that kind of leads me into that, that next question I wanted to chat about for a little bit, um, if you're open to that, but that's, uh, you know, navigating exercise from this place where, you know, how was that for you for navigating coming from a place of, you mentioned a few things. You said, you know, cold turkey, um, going from exercise, cold turkey. I did the same thing, just cold turkey, over-exercising, and um, going to just, you know, kind of walks and also yoga. And that's um, kind of similar journeys as far as, like, exercise go. Um, and, you know, it's different for everyone, um, and there's no right way. Um, but for you, how how did you navigate going from this compulsive over exercise to you know finding you know from going to cold turkey to finding yoga what what did that look like yeah um well i think a big part of it for me was realizing that the um like what was what felt really tied to my disorder and what didn't um and so basically anything that I engaged in while well in the midst of my eating disorder. I just, I just didn't do for a long time. Yeah. Um, and I think part of it was because I didn't have enough trust built up with myself to go back because I felt like um, while that was something, so like the, you know, lifting was a big feature for me of my disorder. And um, there was, there were uh, several times in the years following as I was recovering that um, I thought like, oh, maybe now is the time that I could like go back to the gym and try it. And, and every time I just kind of was, I did like some check-ins with myself, you know, would that feel satisfying or enjoyable? Um, what was it about those things that was really interesting to me at the time? And it was all my eating disorder, you know? And, um, and I think I've done honestly like a handful of maybe like group classes or something over the last several years to sort of like not not test myself in terms of like will I go back to my eating disorder but in terms of like do I like this um and and I don't really so I've learned that and that's my experience right like I I know of recovered folks who still really enjoy like higher intensity activities uh I'm not really one of them so for me it was um getting to a place where I could sort of trust myself and then asking the questions of what I actually like and um, and 
having a lot of compassion about what the answer would be because I think there's also some morality and tied tied up in what kinds of activities that you you know should like or whatever yeah yeah well thank you that was super helpful because I think you know a big thing is when people are you know you don't have to go go cold turkey although I recommend it you know if that's something that someone feels safe doing or willing to do um because it can provide it can kind of speed up the process or provide more information um because really you're, you're untying those things you, you have that opportunity to untie it from the eating disorder altogether and start breaking that down um but I think what's so hard with exercise is that you know it does bring so much enjoyment it does it, it is helpful you know so just being able to find that healthy relationship with exercise and, and that understanding if it's coming from your eating disorder or from your authentic voice being have separating it from it it doesn't um it's not it's messy you know you you are kind of doing you're trying to navigate that healthy relationship with exercise while also trying to get rid of the eating disorder at the same time so it's messy and it's you know up and down so um i get that question a lot and i'm gonna link to a few things um, below the video to kind of help. But um, one thing you said is just, it's, it sounds like you were just honest with yourself. Like you were intent, not, not only honest, but like an, you were raising enough awareness for yourself and intentionally thinking about it so that you can be honest with yourself and, and what the intention was behind exercise. Totally. Well, and also, um, my experience with yoga shifted a lot too in my relationship with exercise because when it started it was heated power vinyasa you know like that and I I I don't want to use the word hate but I do not do that style of yoga now like I do not like that at all um and so I think it's constantly like checking in with yourself as things continue to shift of like how does this serve me or how does it harm me do I like this? Um, you know, like, what is this bringing to the table? What is this contributing to my life? Yeah. And, and permission for it to be constantly evolving, right? Like, for me, the, my journey with yoga is the perfect example of that, where um, the style or like the environment or even the frequency of how much I'm doing it has changed a lot. Or even, you know, so then I, it also kind of turned into a, a life purpose a little bit for me because I became a yoga teacher um but it's expanded my definition of what yoga even is because technically there are eight limbs of yoga and the physicality piece is one of the eight and so um I don't have as much of a physical practice anymore but I definitely still feel like yoga is impacting my life in ways that I really love yeah Definitely. I love, I love that you mentioned just how it, how it evolves because the one, the, the thing I was going to add to, you know, exploring your relationship with exercise is just the patience um, that, you know, you, you kind of have to, it's just important to note that it takes a while and it's ever evolving. You think that you, you know, you, you think that this is where it's going to be and that it continues to evolve. So, you know, just having an open mind and, and open to, you know, being patient with the process because it takes a while and it, it takes a while just, uh, you know, the first part of it of breaking down, you know, those harmful tendencies that you might have with exercise and then building it back up. And like you said, seeing well, what actually brings me joy, um, you know, and then exploring other things It just, it takes a while. And I can speak to that with my own experience, the way exercise has shifted and the things I thought I liked versus I, you know, I hate, um, it just changes a lot. It's kind of like your relationship with food when you're going through, you know, eating sort of recovery and, um, you know, intuitive eating and you're like, I hate that food. And, oh my gosh, I really like this one food. And you had no idea. <laughs> well, and it's also like the shifting, um, I guess, permission and just flexibility of with food and with movement, I have found that, you know, there will be certain times in my life where I'm relying more on convenience foods, for example, or there'll be just like there will be certain times in my life where I'm not moving as much. It feels better to rest or, you know, like there's all kinds of fluctuations that I don't think like the, the message is not that in our general culture. It's it's more like, you know, you find this one pattern of doing something and you just rinse and repeat. Um, and so it's been a lot more freeing to realize that it can shift with me and my life and my likes 
Yeah. Yeah. It comes down to like a major tenant in my opinion of recovery, which is building that internal trust with yourself, that internal trust and um, like an intuition, which is really just taking those uncomfortable steps to, you know, give your permission to, to do so. So um, yeah, that's awesome. Th thank you so much, Carly. This was, I think, I think this will be really helpful for some people. It's also great to hear, you know, how much of how much yoga has um, played a part in your recovery. That's so that's so cool. Um, so yeah, if you have anything else you'd like to add, go ahead. If not, we can wrap it up. Um, I think the only other thing I want to say is just that um, if you're watching this or listening to this and uh, resonating and and thinking about and reflecting on maybe your own recovery that uh, Jamie and I are rooting for you and and we're very much like sitting beside you in all of this yes I love that heck yes um, and I hope you find some inspiration in this um, and yeah just remember to this is all I like to note in these videos and I kind of put it below but this is all super individualized so you know really take care of yourself around it. This is not, um, you know, this is just a little piece of insight to take if you would like it, it's part of your journey. So um, yeah, brooding for you on your journey. And thank you so much, Carly, for being here and sharing a little part of your story with everyone. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having these videos.